guys, if you're new here, my name's Heidi and this is my 57 foot narrow boat, the Rum Wench. And today I'm going to be taking it over the big one. Yeah, the Pontus Southley Aqueduct, also known as the Stream in the Sky. But before we do that, we've got to go and do some engine checks. So this engine is a 1969 Lister HR2. Yeah, she's air cooled, so she's a bit of a noisy bugger. Yeah, she's a bit dirty. She gets a bit fluffy. Yeah, anyway, let's check the oil. Oh, that looks perfect. Let's give it a double dip for to make sure. Lovely and moist. Let's get her started off. <laughs> so just past these more boats is the start of the aqueduct and it's a very narrow channel with only room for one boat. So you need to check it's clear before you proceed. So guys, we're on top of the world. Oh, wow, how amazing is this? Oh, I'm loving it! So that's it guys, the aqueduct is done. I'm gonna turn left here now, which leads you up to Langothland Basin. I'm not sure if I'll make it all the way, but we'll give it a go. But I'm single-handed and my friend Nikki on her boat single-handed and there are sections on this canal where you're meant to send someone forward to check no one's coming because it's very, very narrow and two boats can't pass. And uh, yeah, neither of us are able to do that. <laughs> so it's going to be fun. Bloody sharp turn this, I've buggered that up. Oh. I do show everything on this channel. Let's see if Nikki makes it, because I made a right bugger up of that turn there. Let's see if she makes it. She did it bloody perfectly, much better than me. So this is a section of canal now where you've got to stay exactly in the middle channel. If you slightly come out of the channel, you've got a massive risk of being grounded. Yeah, but at least we can pull each other off. So guys, this section of the Langothan Canal normally takes an average boat about two hours to complete. However, both myself and Nikki have got very deep drafted boats. So we need to stay in the middle channel and we need to go slow because the minute you give your boat some thrust, she thumps the bottom. So the last time I did this, it took me about four and a half hours. That's two and a half hours more than average. Yeah, so just take it nice and slow. So guys, it's absolutely freezing, really, really cold. So I'm gonna look for somewhere now to moor up because I just need to sit by that fire. <laughs> I 
I'm all moored up and wow, look at this amazing view. There is a road just there, so it's a little bit noisy, but oh, I mean, you can see the mist on the hills there. Just amazing. And I didn't struggle as much as I thought I would coming up, to be fair, but I did have a lot of ballast removed from my boatman's cabin when I was in Tomenden, so I can't talk properly, me, 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 my lips are numb. But yeah, isn't it fantastic? My boat is an absolute bomb site because I'm in the middle of painting. So the other night when my friend Nikki called round for a brew, I'd started painting the sides of my boat and the roof of my boat. So I got her to help out and we got it finished in no time. Anyway, she's called round for a brew again tonight. I'm not coming round for a brew again. You can do one. And I've started on this wall. I'm going to paint this wall, brighten it up a little bit. We're going with orange. This is the one I chose. Yeah, it's a uh, Johnson's Fiery Sunset. Yeah. Get it on. So guys, it's absolutely Baltic outside. It is freezing. Yeah, but I've got my lovely fire roaring its knackers off here. And it's very warm in my main cabin, but I've got two fires on my boat and one's in my boatsman's cabin, which is at the rear of the boat. And that's where I sleep. I have a traditional boatsman's cabin bed, although it is a lot wider. It's a full size double in width, but it is a cross bed. And I pack that away in the day. But at the moment I'm having problems with the little fire in there. So I'm gonna clean that out today. Just put my jumper on because it's absolutely bloody cold and I've got these back doors open. <laughs> so before I can give my chimney a good old fashioned poking, I need to remove the fire bricks and the baffle plate and then make sure you shut the door mm. and also close your flaps. <laughs> yeah, because you don't want any dust coming in once you start prodding it. Look at that, I've got a nice big bush. Yeah. But look at this. Your ropes. Look at that. Got semi on. Frozen. That's how cold it is, guys. So let's uh, get this in the hole. So I normally clean my fires out a couple of times a year, and I've got the two fires, so that's four cleans. Yeah, filthy job. But yeah, it just helps with the draw because I'm often burning bits of wood that I find and I haven't seasoned properly, which isn't good really. But yeah, just stay on top of it. And now I've put the fire back together again. Let's get it lit and see how well it's drawing. Yeah, it looks a lot better, to be honest. So I'm moored in the absolute middle of nowhere and it's just stunning views. Honestly, there's snow on the mountains and everything. But there is a pub just up there and somebody just knocked on my boat and invited me to the pub for a drink in the daytime. That's not good, is it? But obviously I'm going. Yeah, true yeah. Light. Well, I'll just get my coat. Come for a run. <laughs> Nick, you see you. How long do you need? No, I'm ready. So I'm in the sun, Trevor. Yeah, what a fabulous little pub this is. Got a roaring fire going. Yeah, I might just move in. Look at the views out there. Lovely views. Cheers, everyone. <laughs> Look a little Gracie there. What are you having, Gracie? You're not having my wine. <laughs> I'm keeping my wine. <laughs> so just walking back from the pub, I ended up having two drinks. Yeah, two drinks in an afternoon, which is not normal for me, to be honest. It's not, but it was so lovely meeting John and oh, Gracie. I love Gracie. What a gorgeous little dog. I'd have her. I'd have her tomorrow. Not that way. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Sometimes it just comes out and I don't mean what I say and just know what the mind you've got and how you take it. And you just... Oh, but yeah, a little grace, it's pretty lovely. Anyway, that's what I'm when you have two glasses of wine in an afternoon. It's not good. He needs to get back to the boat because Tesco are delivering our shopping in about an hour's time and I need to find me granny trolley. 
Yeah, the sexy granny trolley, guys. I tend to keep it just in the engine room, just there. But here it is. So because we're both traveling on our own, what we've decided to do is to cook for each other each night so we get at least an hour to two hours company a day. Yeah, so we've done a joint shopping order with Tesco and they're gonna be delivering it to the pub. Yeah, and then we're just gonna do that. And I just think it's good, isn't it? Cause you gotta make sure, cause it's very easy in winter, you get isolated and it's really important to just check in on each other. So we're just gonna be doing that cause we're gonna be traveling together for the next few weeks. Yeah, so uh, just waiting for Tesco's to call now and then we'll go and get it. So we've just had notification that our Tesco delivery is gonna be there in a minute. So we met our little delivery driver and uh, we're completely stocked up. They've just got to cross a big road now. Good morning everyone. Oh my goodness, it's absolutely freezing. It was minus six last night here. I had both fires lit. The boat was 30 odd degrees. I had to open the side hatch at one point. <laughs> yeah, bloody warm. But that's why I think it is that I feel the cold because the boat's so warm inside that when I come outside, I'm freezing my knackers off. And even the wrong wench is cold this morning. Let me show you. She's freezing, look at her. Yeah, she's got ice on her. But it is moving day, so we're going to set off in a minute. I've not seen any sign of life from Nikki's boat. There is smoke coming out the chimney though, so I think she has put coal on the fire. Yeah, no sign of life. But as soon as she's up and about, we're going to cruise. Now we've got the narrows to contend with, where you're meant to send someone ahead. But as we're both single-handers, we can't do that. So we're just going to go for it. Woo, it's so cold, but I've got my lovely hat on from Mark. My thermal socks on from Alex. I've got my vest on and my nipple warmer. Yeah, I've got a brew and I've got some rum. We're going to be warm. We're going to be warm. But we've got to navigate these narrows, so let's just hope there's nothing coming. Oh, the joys of single landing. I've also got my fire lit here, so I've got smoke going in my face. Oh, but I'm lovely and warm stood here at my hatch. It's keeping all my undercarriage nice and toasty. You'll see from my solar panels that I did brush off part of them this morning but I was going to go down the other side of my boat, the water side, to clean the other side and it was so slippy. Even with my grip on, it was just so slippy so I didn't risk it. <laughs> so I've only just done half of them. Oh, smoke from this fire. Oh. But it is lovely and toasty warm in my nether regions today. <laughs> We'll be standing in this hatch. Oh, my top lips are frozen. I just spoke to my friend Ian, who was walking his dog. He's actually moored in the basin, and he said the basin's frozen solid. So we're gonna do a bit of ice breaking, guys. This will be fun. And I'll have to go in front ways. Sometimes I reverse, I do a turn and reverse because I get on and off my back. So it's easier for me if my stern is moored at the pontoons. But if it's frozen, I'm just gonna have to go in forwards. Yeah. Oh, the joys. A bit of ice breaking today. I messaged ahead to some friends of mine that are in the basin and they said they're out with barge poles trying to break the ice. Yeah, and I was told that the Langothan hardly ever freezes because of this flow. Oh, well that's not true, is it? the second set of narrows now 
I hope that if there is a boat approaching, they've got crew and they would send someone ahead. So if I see someone, they'll see me. I've got no crew to send. Yeah, so just hope. It's if two single-handers meet, that's when it's a problem. But most boats have crew and they can send them. I'm sorry, my lips are so numb. I'm really struggling to talk. Oh, oh the joys. And I've got Nikki approaching quite fast up my rear here as well. I've slowed right down because we're on these narrows. It's a bit mad here because I've got a cliff on this side where they've dug out from the rock and then on the other side is a sheer drop oh it's awesome it's amazing oh breathe in guys yeah some of this canal is so narrow it's ridiculous with it being winter it's not so bad because there aren't many moving boats but in the height of the season there's no way that I would attempt to single hand this I'd always make sure I followed another boat that had crew so they could make sure no one was coming so guys this is the end of the Langothlan for motorised boats. You can go ahead if you're horse drawn um, and they do have a trip boat that does that but all motorised boats either have to turn around here or go in the basin. I'm sort of stuck in the ice. Balls. Good push. We'll get in now. Oh, look at that ice. Nearly there. So, guys, we've got ourselves all moored up. Wow, that ice was so thick. I couldn't believe it. Yeah, but we got in, probably took off with blacking off. Yeah, but uh, all the boats were helping and cheering. It was just a lovely atmosphere to come back to. I put my boat on hookup now. You get um, shoreline power, that's unlimited power. And that for us, continuous cruises. Oh, it's better than set. <laughs> So guys, it's absolutely freezing here today and uh, the ice is all refrozen so I can't get out of here now. <laughs> but at CRT I've been cutting down lots of trees and all the boaters have been there and nicking all the wood. Yeah, brilliant. So I'm going to go and get some now. Look at this lovely chainsaw Ian's got here. And it's small. <laughs> then he got a little one. <laughs> That's awesome, that. <laughs> I've got my piece of wood, look at that. Woohoo! 
Yeah, so uh, mine's hawthorn apparently. So I need to let this season and dry out, but it's a piece of wood and it? it's free heat. That's what we big coat on and me at because I'm now following some other boaters. We've got our granny trolleys because we know where there's some more wood. I'm gonna go and get it. <laughs> Lots of the country has been frozen solid with the canals. However, the Langothan, because it has this flow, it doesn't freeze as easily, but it has frozen. And I was just talking to somebody and they said the last time they've seen the canal like this was 2012. Yeah, so uh, that just goes to show. Um, but anyway, we're going to chop this wood now. They're all here, they're all gathered. They've got the tools, the chainsaws, and they're going to crack on with some sawing. Stuart's got a big chopper. Look at that. Size of that. Woohoo, it's a big one. So the thing is, what they're chopping up here, it's an ash tree, which has been felled already by CRT. But the best thing about ash is you can put it on your fire straight away. It doesn't have to be seasoned, you know, stored for a couple of years to dry out. You can just throw it straight on. That's why we're like kids all excited because it's just the best thing you can have. <laughs> and it burns bloody warm and all. Do you think that granny trolley is sexy? Oh, it's 100% sexy, yeah, that, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. It's all over it, isn't it? Yeah, ultimate fashion accessory. Yeah, definitely. Everyone should have one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's all that'll do us for a few days, won't it? Yeah. So this guy is Stuart France and is an amazing photographer. Don't you be giving me that. <laughs> Yeah, I'll show you some of the pictures he's done on my boat now. I've ended up on dog watch. Got the easy job. Hi <laughs> <laughs> ho! I've got a big in. So we've been watching these men playing with the tools and now Stuart's got his big chopper out. This should keep me warm for a few days. So these reprobates here are all burning that wood that we foraged today on a fire. It's magic powder. So the canal's now all defrosted guys, we're off to the pub. Yeah, and uh, that's an idea of one of the pieces, and this is after it's defrosted, still that thick. Yeah. Woo! Langothan is a proper little touristy town and it's even busy in the winter and even when it's wetter than a mermaid's foof it doesn't put people off coming to visit. It's got a fantastic steam train and lots of things to see and do. Yeah, you just feel like you're on holiday. So guys, we've been to the pub and I've come to my friend Graham's house. He lives right in Langothan. It's so gorgeous. I'm going to show you around. So let's have a quick look around Graham's house. This is his wine cellar. How cool is that? Yeah, but this house is so quirky. It's right in the heart of Langothlin with all its original features. And I know lots of you love all the old quirky English and Welsh buildings. So here's a little tour. Hello! Hello! Hello. So guys, it's getting quite late now. We've had cheese and biscuits and we're now on the dead man's fingers. Who's not had a dead man's fingers inside him? <laughs> Oh, I love the smell of dead man's fingers. It's lovely. <laughs> so guys, it looks like most of the ice is defrosted today. Yeah, we've had loads of rain. Typical winter. But I'm off now to see Ben and Emily. They're leaving very shortly. So let's go and see them. Ahoy! <laughs> Look at this joy of sunshine this morning. <laughs> this is Alan, everyone. Isn't she gorgeous? Oh, you're beautiful. Oh. So we're on there uh, on Ben and Emily's boat. You, you haven't come to see us, have you? You've just come no. to see Alan. Yeah, I just come to see your pussy, Emily. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to have a cat, Heidi? Uh, yeah, I'd like to have a pet. I'm just, I'm probably just get a rabbit. <laughs> 
<laughs> so I had a quick brew and then it was time to leave. See you later, guys. Bye. So guys, I'm back in the boat now. It's lovely and warm in here, but it's bloody freezing outside. Yeah, I've got myself a coffee. Obviously, it's got a rum in it. So cheers. Mmm, rum coffee. One of my viewers, Phil Thorpe, he calls a rum coffee a wowser. Yeah, yeah, it's a wowser. A few people asked me about my little parrot they saw in one of the videos. Yeah, this is Polly, Polly Potty Mouth. Yeah, she copies everything you say. Let's have a go, eh? Nipples like bullets. <laughs> Great fun. Keeps me entertained many hours, many nights, but yeah. Oh. I've got nothing else to play with, have I? Oh. Anyway, if you've enjoyed this video, please do give it a like. Subscribe if you haven't already, absolutely free to do. And if you want to know when I release a new one, then you have to press the bell end. Before I go, I just want to say a massive shout out to this week's Pirate Crew. And here they are, me heart is. We've got Angela, thoughts on narrowboating with Nigel, Tankless Clive, Stinky the Pooh, David Van Wart, Alan Harbit, Keith and Fiona, Captain Glenn, thank you so much, Glenn. The Buxton, Graham, Roger and Jason from Thailand, lucky buggers. Peter, Les, Karen and Phoebe, Jack and Amber, Mark Grunenberg, John and Linda from Narrowboat Cockium, and Anne Hay. Thank you so much, guys. And also a huge, huge thank you to my patrons. We did a live the other night and that went quite well. So big thank you to the patrons. Anyway, guys, that's it. So please stay safe, take care, and I'll see you next week. So lovely to meet John and Gracie. Oh, fantastic. I have met them in the past as well when I was trading. But lovely, lovely. I'm going to say couple. <laughs> <laughs> We've had a coffee now. We're off. These are going to the bollocks.